Kia ora team, my name's Ben and this wonderful human being is Ronnie. And we're going to explain the results we get from the isokinetic dynamometer and humac norm. Okay, the first thing we'll get is this graph. And down this axis, we'll have angle. And on this axis, we'll have torque. So this is going to show us um, at the joint angle how much torque is generated throughout the range of motion. So this is good because what information do we get from this graph? So what's this going to show us? The peak torque. Gorgeous. So peak torque. So that's the maximum torque or strength someone can generate. Good. And then if we drop this down, what do we get here? At what angle? They develop that peak torque. Brilliant. Angle of peak torque is really important. Why? Angle of peak torque is important. Because when I'm sprinting. Oh yeah, that's where you get your the greatest strength. Uh, strength to like. To stop me from. Getting injured. Good. So, run. So, when Lonnie's sprinting. <laughs> And been stretching over the last couple of weeks. <laughs> we be sprinting, and her legs here. There's lots of tension through her hamstrings. So much. Her hip flexors and quads are generating force to straighten her knee out. So her hamstring is risk of tearing. So this is where we want our hamstring to be the strongest, because if it's strong now, it can resist the tension on the quads to pull back, so it doesn't tear. So if the angle peak torque is at long muscle lengths the athlete is going to be quite safe from tearing. Whereas if the angle of peak torque is like here, where the hamstring's in a shortened position, it means it's going to necessarily be weaker here. Like they've been stretching. And Lons is going to tear. So, from the humac norm, the isokinetic dynamometer, we get peak torque and angle of peak torque. And if our angle of peak torque is too far to short muscle lengths, we've got risk of injury. What are we going to do about it? Uh, we're going to strengthen it. Good. What type of strengthening? P, I saw your arm. <laughs> Good. Cool, friend. Um, e eccentric exercises. Brilliant. Eccentric strengthening. So when we do eccentric strengthening, there's tension through the muscle and then the muscle lengthens. So let's do one right now. So on your knees, so this is the Nordic hamstring exercise, I'll hold on to your heels, um, come up nice and tall, and then lower down as slow as you can, slowly, slowly, my knees. slowly, slowly, my knees. lower, <laughs> my knees bend, okay, faster than that, just do one, go, go, okay, so that eccentrically worked your hamstring, it's my knees, and it hurt her knees. But well, we'll get your pillow. Yeah, that's what I need, a pillow. You're getting old, Lons. <laughs> okay, so, um, when we do eccentric training, what happens? The muscle. Yes. <laughs> There's a sarcomere. So, as we eccentrically lengthen, the sarcomere gets pulled apart, and some of our sarcomeres will pop. And then what do we do? What does our body do? Great question. We're going to create more... Sarcomeres. Good. And what's that called? Sarcomerogenesis. Gorgeous. Sarcomere, the contractor unit. Genesis is... Creation. creation. Good. First book of the Bible, creation. So if we, if we get sarcomerogenesis, then we get stronger and we get... Longer. longer, so our, our muscle will get longer because it's got more sarcomeres, and we get stronger at longer, longer muscle, muscle lengths. Good? Yes. So what happens is we go from having our angle peak torque here to our angle peak torque here at long muscle lengths. Um, so that's good for injury prevention. Okay, what else? So we've just measured how strong a hamstring is. What other things can we measure? Quads. Gorgeous. Well, I 
So now I can take this, the same strength measurement of our quads and what is this telling me? That my quads are stronger than my hamstrings. Good. Would I expect my quads to be stronger than my hamstrings? Yes. Good. So if the ratio is too big, so if my quads is, is oh, if my hamstrings are like less than 70% of my quads, what could be a problem? Uh, if my quads are too strong for my hamstrings. Oh, then the hamstring could cause injury, a hamstring to um, pull or something. Perfect. Okay, so if my quads are too strong for my hamstrings, and what's this ratio called? So antagonist. Yeah. And what is it? Agonist. Good. Our agonist antagonist ratio. So if this ratio is too big, what are we going to do? Strength in our hamstrings. Perfect. What type of training are we going to do? Like, do me a gym program. I've warmed up, I've done my dynamic stretches, what exercises are you giving me? Uh, hamstring curls. Lovely. It just works for hamstrings. What about squats? No, that's more than quads. Good. Should I work my hamstrings and my quads in this program? No. Yes. No. Raise your hands. <laughs> so yeah. if, I, if, I, if I strengthen my hamstrings, but I also strengthen my quads... Oh, it's always going to be a level up then. Good. The hamstring. So no, the answer is no. Yeah. Give quads a rest until our hamstring catches up. Lovely. Okay. Then, the other thing we can do is we can measure my left hamstring. Oh yes, and reverse is the right hamstring. Perfect. And this is my right hamstring. Your right hamstring is stronger than your left hamstring. And if I find my right hamstring stronger than my left hamstring, could that be a problem? Yes. What am I going to do about it? You're going to need to do hamstring curls on your left side. Good. What's it called when I do one side only? Single. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, yeah, single leg training or unilateral, unilateral, unilateral training. training. Perfect. Would it be helpful if I did bilateral training? Yes. No. <laughs> Good. Because <laughs> if I did a if I did a squat, oh boy, it's in a multi uh, the joint. Is that yeah. what you're talking about? Okay, yeah. So okay, so what's unilateral? Is one single one single one limb? Yeah. Limb. Whereas bilateral would be more than one. Yeah, so most people only have two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh. so one <laughs> means two. Kids in the corner laughing at me. Good. So bilateral. What's an example of a bilateral leg exercise? Uh, the hamstring curl. Uh, How do you do bilateral legs? Um, yep, you can do oh, a hamstring curl. Oh, oh, like the leg press. Yep, leg press. So, if I'm pushing with both legs, and one leg is a lot stronger than the other, what do you think is going to happen? It's always going to be stronger than the other. Yeah, potentially the strong leg is going to do more work than the weak leg. And the strong leg gets stronger, and we maintain that imbalance. Whereas, if we do unilateral training, then if it's only one leg pushing, we know all the work is going to one side. So, yeah. If we've got an imbalance between our left and right, we do unilateral training to correct that imbalance. Okay, the other graph we get, yeah, the weight, there's more. The other graph we get is if we do isometric testing on the humac norm, mm -hmm. and we get a graph that looks like this. So this one is time. And then this one is torque. Okay, so what do I get from this graph? How fast you peak, we get to peak torque. Perfect. So, um, this here is how fast I'm going. 
If there's my peak torque, this would be the amount of time it takes to get to my peak torque. Peak torque, time for peak torque, and this is also known as rate of force development. Force development. Rate of force development. Good. Okay, so if I've got this athlete here, and this athlete here, tell me the difference between those two. I don't want to confuse everybody that's watching. This is how fast it takes blue to hit. Oh, no, there. Sorry, sorry, sorry. One more, one more. Wrong, wrong line, wrong line. So point out blue's peak torque. Uh, somewhere here. Yep, so right at the top. This is there. And it's there. So that's how fast it takes them to get to their peak torque. Okay, who's stronger, the, the Smurf or the other guy? Smurf. Smurf. Good. So the blue one's stronger. Um, so if we were doing wrestling, if we were doing a tug of war, then the blue guy's stronger. Um, do we even want this fella? Yes. What's good about him? He's fast. Good. He's faster. So how can he be faster? If he's not as strong, because there's his peak torque, which is nowhere near as good as this one. So why is he faster? Uh, because it takes him less time to generate this force, and then Beautiful. he peaks. Good. So, how long is our foot on the ground when we sprint? Is it five seconds, or less than one second? Less than one second. Okay, so this is how long our foot's on the ground. So at this stage, then the blue fella <coughs> generates this much torque, whereas the other guy generates that much torque in one second. Yeah. So even though this first person doesn't generate as much torque overall, at the time, the critical time period where the foot's on the ground, he or she generates more torque than this other person. Good. So this one, high peak torque, lower rate of force development. This person, lower peak torque, faster rate of force development. So good at sprints, good at slow strength. This person here, um, Mr. A, wants to be better at sprinting. So he's got great peak torque, but poor rate of force development. What type of training does he do? Sprinting. Good. Sprinting, what else? Lightweight. Yep, he'll use lightweight. And what, what's his speed going to be? Uh, 10 seconds, I think. Oh, sorry, what? How, if he's going to use lightweight, how fast is he going to move it? Oh, you know, as fast as he can. As fast as he can, good. So what's it called when we project something into space? Ballistic. Good. So sprinting, ballistic training, so when we throw or project something in the air, and what's it when we absorb an eccentric contraction and then go again? Um, Perfect. So this guy, if he wants to improve his rate of force development, he'll do sprinting, ballistic. lightweight, fast, and he'll do ballistics and plyometrics. So if that happens, then he's going to improve his... Rate of force development. Good. What may happen to his peak torque? It will decrease. Good. Okay, then this person who's really good at his rate of force development but his peak torque isn't so good, if he wants to improve his peak torque, what type of training? Uh, lift heavy. Good. Lift heavy, so the bar speed will be? Slow. And that will increase his? Peak torque. But if he does lots of heavy slow lifting, his peak torque increases, but what may decrease? His um, acceleration, his speed. Good, his rate. Oh, his rate of force development. Lovely. Boom! Nice work, Lons.